Hi everyone, this is Chris Martin bringing you the Emulsify 2.0 Drush Install Screencast. This screencast will specifically cover the Emulsify Drush command. This command's purpose is to set up a new copy of the Emulsify theme. I used the word copy here and not subtheme intentionally. This is because the subtheme of your new copy is Drupal Core's stable theme, not Emulsify. This new copy of Emulsify will use the human readable name that you provide and will build the necessary structure to get you on your way to developing a custom theme. Before we dig in too deep, I recommend that you have the following installed first. A Drupal 8 core installation, the Drush CLI command, at least major version 8, Node.js, preferably the latest stable version, a working copy of the Emulsify demo theme, 2.0 or greater. And if you haven't already watched the Emulsify 2.0 Composer install presentation, please stop this video and go watch that one now. If you haven't already started using Dresh 9, you should consider upgrading as soon as possible because the next minor version release of Drupal Core, 8.4.0, is only going to work with Dresh 9 or greater. And here's two recommendations. We recommend that you use PHP 7.0 or greater, as you'll get some massive performance improvements for a very little amount of work. We also recommend that you use Composer to install Drupal and Emulsify. In fact, if you didn't use Composer to install Emulsify, or at least run Composer install inside of Emulsify, you will get errors. You will also notice errors if npm install failed on the Emulsify demo theme installation. Now that we have everything set up and ready to go, this presentation will first discuss the theory behind the Drush script. Then we will show you what to expect if the installation was successful. After that, I will give you some links to additional resources. The general idea of this command is that it creates a new theme from Emulsify's files, but is actually based on Drupal Core's stable theme. Once you have run the command, the demo emulsify theme is no longer required and you can uninstall it from your Drupal code base. When, where, and why. You should run this command before writing any custom code, but after your Drupal 8 site is working and emulsify has been installed via Composer. Where. You should run the command from the Drupal root or use a Dresh alias. Why why you should not edit the Emulsify themes files. If you installed Emulsify the recommended way via Composer, next time you run Composer update, all of your custom code changes will be wiped out. If this happens, I really hope you have version control. So how do you use the Emulsify Dresh command? What happens if you want to overwrite something? Well. We have two sections here. We have arguments and we have options. There's only one argument required, and that's the human readable name. This name can contain spaces and capital letters. We have four options. The first of which is the theme description, which will appear within Drupal and your .info file. The second is the machine name. This is the option that allows you to pick the directory name and the machine name as it appears within Drupal. The third option is the path. This is the path that your theme will be installed to. It defaults to themes custom, but if you don't like that, you can change it to any directory relative to your web root. The fourth and final option is the slim option. This allows advanced users who don't need demo content or don't want anything but the bare minimum required to create a new theme. Please note that the human readable name is the only one that's required. The options don't have to appear in any specific order. They don't have to appear at all. And you can only pass one if you just want to change that from its default. If your new theme was successfully created, you should see a successful output message. 
In the example below, I used the slim option because it's a bit faster, but again, it's an option and it's not required. The success message contains information that you might find helpful, including the name of the theme that was created, the path where it was installed, and the next required step for setup. Setting up your custom theme. Navigate to your new theme on the command line and type yarn. You can watch as Pattern Lab is downloaded and installed. If the installation is successful, you should see a Pattern Lab successful message and your theme will be available within Drupal. Now that we have Pattern Lab successfully installed and you committed it to your version control system, <coughs> Git, you're probably eager to use it. Emulsify uses NPM scripts to set up a local Pattern Lab instance for display of your style guide. The script you are interested in is yarn start. Run this command for all of your local development. You do not have to have a working Drupal installation at this point to do development on your components. If you need a designer to work on your project who isn't familiar with Drupal to make some tweaks, you only have to give them your code base, have them use yarn to install, and yarn start to see your style guide. It is, however, recommended that the initial setup of your components is done by someone with background knowledge of Drupal templates and themes, as the variables passed to each component will be different for each Drupal template. For more information on components and templates, keep an eye out for our soon-to-come demo components and screencasts on building components. Now that you have run Yarn Start, you can open your browser and navigate to the localhost URL that appears in your console. If you get an error here, you might already have something running on port 3000. If you need to cancel this script at any point, you can hit Control C. Thank you for watching today's screencast. We hope you found this presentation informative and enjoy working with Emulsify 2.0. If you would like to search for some additional resources, you can go to emulsify.info or github.com slash 4kitchens slash emulsify. Have a great day.